Okay, afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Waheed Khan. I am a superintendent based here in Wolfham Forest, covering Wolfham Forest and Newham um, within our new structure in policing under what's called a BCU, Basic Command Unit. I'm here to talk a little bit about hate crime because as well as working as a superintendent in East London, I'm actually the Metropolitan Police's hate crime lead for across London. So when it comes to hate crime, I'm hoping if you have any questions afterwards, we can talk about that as well. We've heard a lot about hate crime this afternoon, but from a policing perspective, I thought it's important just to outline what we follow, the definition that we have when it comes to hate crime, so that people can appreciate what it is for us as police officers to consider when it comes to hate crime. Now, on the screen here, I'll just take you through the definition very quickly. Um, it's any criminal offence, and we'll talk about what that means, but a criminal offence is something to bear in mind. When it's perceived by any person, so anyone that's there, um, and it's motivated by one of those bullet points, so be it race, religion, sexual orientation, disability, transgender, or a perception of any of those bullet points. So it may not be, it, someone might do, commit a hate crime against you because they think you're of a certain faith or race, even if you aren't of that faith or race. But the fact that they've gone and committed a criminal offense for that reason, we would consider that to be a hate crime. Now the reason why I wanted to start with that is because a hate crime from a policing perspective is different to a hate incident. So I'm looking around, I can see you're probably thinking, what's the difference? So a hate crime is what we've just gone through the, on the previous slide, which is a definition that I've just took you through. But a hate incident is when it doesn't meet the criminal threshold. So where, if the circumstances do not amount to a recordable crime, but the victim perceives that actually, I feel that this was a hate crime against me, then it will be recorded as a hate incident. So a hate incident is any incident which the victim or anyone else thinks is based on someone's prejudice towards them because of their race, religion, sexual orientation, disability, or because they are transgender. So not all hate incidents will amount to a hate crime. So that's the other thing. So there's a distinguishing factor that we take into account as police. This slide, I know we're going to, I'm sure we're going to have lots of conversation around this afternoon, but from a policing perspective, some of the common um, points, I'll just bring them all up actually. Some of the common reasons that we know people do not report hate crime to police are for those listed there. So it can include mistrust, the fact that they, for whatever reason, don't trust the police to deal with it properly. It can be because apathy, they just, you know, it happens, there's, there's, they don't think anything's going to happen, it's not worth their time, they don't think it's worth going to the police to look into it, but they should. For fear, maybe from, if they're from a different country, the policing experience they've had in different countries is different to the policing approach we take here. Um, it could be for a variety of reasons, not even those that are listed here. But the point is, we know as the police that there are a lot of hate, crime, hate crimes as well as hate incidents that take place that are not brought to our attention. So what we are aware of, those that are reported, are not the whole picture. I wanted to touch upon this slide because I, I think this is a, a very interesting one. What this shows is that sadly we have a steady stream of hate crime which happens consistently uh, throughout the whole year. But actually, there are what we can see on this um, picture here as spikes, where following particular incidents we know from a policing perspective that hate crime and hate incidents both increase. So some of the ones that are listed there, uh, the EU referendum, when it happened back in 2016, we saw a notable spike uh, in terms of hate crime that took place after that, following the murder of the MP Joe Cox in the 16th of June of that year, the Westminster Bridge terrorist attack, the Manchester bombing, the London Bridge attack, the Finsbury Park Mosque attack, the Parsons Green nail bomb on the train, if you remember that as well. So there are lots of incidents, and the reason I wanted to share this slide with you is because we know from a policing perspective that even though not all of the hate crime that happens is reported to us, we know that following particular incidents, this can happen and there is an increase in hate crime. So we are very conscious that we need to work very closely with the community following such incidents and such events to make sure that we are working with you and we're providing you with the reassurance and the confidence to come to us when it comes to dealing with hate crime. Oh, 
a way. I'm not sure if this was touched on before I arrived. Um, and that's because I should apologize, actually. This, this was my former <laughs> college, so I was just reminiscing, walking around, enjoying some of the sights. Um, but yes, online hate crime um, is something that I think people, for whatever reason, I think in their minds, they would make a distinction between some thing they say or do in real life compared to the activity they do in the digital world online. From a policing and criminal or from a legislation perspective, there is no difference. If you act in the way that I outlined earlier, the definition that we spoke about, if you, whether you do that in real life, whether you do that online, it's still a crime. and We will investigate it as such and we will deal with it as such. So online hate crime is where essentially the content of a website can be, basically, it means that if you act in a way which you did in real life, which we spoke about earlier, the fact that you did on it online is just as abhorrent. We would still deal with it as a hate crime. So whether that's a message, whether you're sharing pictures and videos, whether you're just having a chat with your friends, if it's something that we become aware of, we will investigate. I just want to touch upon this very quickly. Some of you may, some of you may not know, but in the last couple of years, policing has changed across London. The Metropolitan Police has changed and transformed the way that we operate across London. In the past, we mirrored the 32 boroughs that make up London, but recently we've changed in the last couple of years, and what you see there are 12 different colors, and those 12 different colors make up the different command units, the basic command units across London. We are the pinkish, reddish color over there in the top uh, right-hand corner, which is Wolfen Forest and Newham. And the reason I wanted to highlight that is because when it comes to policing, when it, when it comes to hate crime, yes, we've gone through transformation, but hate crime still remains one of our top priorities. Um, I haven't got a slide up regarding coronavirus, but I, I just want to quickly touch upon that. So the coronavirus, everyone I'm sure will be aware of that and is following the government's advice. But from a policing perspective, when it comes to hate crime, again, the coronavirus we know shows um, that actually a lot of the hate crime is taking place against people of an Eastern or Asian or Chinese background. You might have even seen um, the student, uh, the one from Singapore that was on Oxford Street that was attacked. So these are the kind of incidents that we're seeing. So when we think of hate crime, it's not what you might just perceive as, um, in your mind, you might have a particular view of what hate crime is. It can be anything. The coronavirus, you know, linking that to someone's nationality, their race, uh, it's, it's, still, it's still a hate crime. We are investigating those incidents as such. Now, how do we investigate? So, obviously, any hate crime that takes place is dealt with by the command unit. So that slide that I just showed you, the 12 um, BCUs across London, each of those will take the primary responsibility for any hate crime that they need to investigate within their BCUs. However, centrally speaking, we have a central hate crime team which but which, I, which I lead on, what it does is um, it will collate on a daily basis all of the hate crime that happens across London. They will review it, they will speak to the command units, the officers in those different BCUs across London, make sure they have the support necessary to investigate it properly. And the central hate crime team actually acts as a central point of contact for all of our national partners. So we work with a lot of national partners from organizations such as Tell Mama, Gallup. Uh, there's, there's loads that we work with. And what this team does is they provide the central point. So rather than going to all of the 12 different parts of London, they'll come to one central point and then they will disseminate and share the information as necessary across London. The Form 124H is something we're working on and you'll be seeing that rolling out across London very soon. You may or may not know this, but when it comes to domestic abuse, uh, domestic violence, we have a form called 124D. Um, and what domestic stands for domestic, and what that does is it makes sure that every officer that attends an incident involving a domestic abuse or domestic crime of some sort will follow that form and it will provide a consistent series of questions, a consistent series of considerations that that officer needs to do when it comes to dealing with that crime. In the same way, we're looking to make sure that dealing with hate crime, we have the same, oh, times. 
didn't realize, so I went over. Um, basically, it's to provide consistency. That's one to four H. The, I'll just try and wrap up quickly, so I didn't realize I'd gone over. Hate crime liaison officers are based within each of your uh, BCUs. So Wolf and Forest and Newham will have a hate crime liaison officer, and their job is to share information with the local community around what we're doing with hate crime, and also make sure that the police aren't missing any kind of action, or make sure that if there's any support we need to provide, we do that. I've spoken to them about the national partners, so I won't go upon that. This probably is a bit too detailed. What it essentially says is that when it comes to hate crime, we will investigate every single avenue that's open to us in the best way that we can, be that CCTV, be that witnesses, um, be that victims themselves, be that any potential links to extremism, because we know that hate crime can, in some ways, lead towards extremism as well. I spoke about some of the partners, and this is just the name of the major, the, the, the big ones nationally that we work with. So the CST, uh, Stonewall, Stop Hate UK, these are people that we work with, and we will refer people to those organizations. So in addition to dealing with investigations, separate to that investigation, in terms of providing support and making sure that person can deal with what's happened to them, the, these, these partners have come together and formed something called Catch the Community Alliance to Combat Hate. And that's what we do working with them. Sorry I ran over, but that's a question for me. Cheers.